Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. All right, we're going to take another look at the timeline. Um, I think we have a very interesting, uh, after this weekend or at this weekend, very interesting two weeks to look at. We've seen so much going on. Um, Watch 165 reported that they landed 56 planes in uh, Damascus. Um, often wondered if Damascus would be the kickoff, uh, something that we're to be looking towards, or if that Damascus event was for the saints of the tribulation, or if it's uh, for the Jews at the end of the, the tribulation. I'm not sure uh, where it lands. I don't think that we need a specific sign to say that it's about to happen. Remember what Jesus says. You can look up at the sky and see things are going on. How do you not know what's happening here? There were those that did, though, right? There were those, um, uh, the three wise men, uh, the three kings that knew that Jesus was there. And then uh, they reported to Herod, and then Herod killed all of those uh, babies, male babies under the age of the year two, two years and young, under. And Jesus is the Word, so they died for the Word of God. And so we'll go through the pictures as I take them throughout the week and um, take a look and see where we're at on the timeline. Here we go. This is where we're at right now. We're coming up on July 16th, and I've noticed that uh, when I read these uh, events in the Bible, like when Moses came down from the mountain, they were partying and everything else. People usually aren't partying first thing in the morning. Uh, they wake, you know, they sleep all day and they party at night. The night is for them. And so on July 16th, at nightfall, becoming July 17th, you know how many times people thought 717 was very significant. I did not know this until I worked out the math on Moses going up into the mountain, sitting there in the cloud, and then God calling him out. And for 40 days, God recited the law to him and gave him the Ten Commandments, as we call it, the Ten uh, Laws written in stone. And when Moses came down and saw what the people were doing, he threw down those uh, two stones and destroyed them. What significance does that have uh, on the bride? And that's what we're looking for, right? The bride is looking for the rapture. The saints are looking for the seals and the uh, Antichrist. And uh, the Jews are wanting to inherit the, the, the earth. They're wanting to inherit the world. And so what are we as the bride searching for right now? We are searching really for significance in the timeline. We're not looking for any kind of an event. We're not looking for the great falling away, as they call it, uh, showing that that interpretation is um, flying away or catching away. And uh, they're looking for the Antichrist. I'm not. I don't care who the Antichrist is. I'm not looking for the great apostasia to happen. Um looking to leave this place before she travails. Who's ever heard of such a thing that she uh, gives birth to a male child before she travails? And then the Bible starts speaking of she gives birth to a child after travail. So there is two groups going to heaven. That's the bride and the saints. What is the significance of Moses being called up on the same day Jesus was called up on Shavuot. What's the significance of him sitting in that cloud for seven days, given the law? After 40 days, God says, you better get down there because your people have gone crazy down there. And he comes down and he throws the law down. Isn't that similar to us that we have broke, not broken the law, but the law is broken uh, because Jesus fulfills it, and he takes us and covers our sins and takes us out of here. And then eight, if you count of one, it would be nine days, eight days, uh, nine days inclusive, just eight days later, the ninth of Av, or the eighth of Av at nightfall on July 24th, see down here at the bottom, this is the day that they're saying that 
the temples were taken away twice in history. And are we not now the temple? Yes, they're going to build a physical temple after the rapture occurs. But are we not considered the temple now that the Holy Spirit resides in us and not inside of the confines of the temple that they built twice before and was destroyed twice before? So there's another high watch day, July the 24th. I know everybody thinks the 9th of August is on July 26th because that's what it says on Google. But it is not how the numbers work out if you start your year on March the 17th and assign a day a Gregorian day of March 17th to the first day of the year, which is Nisan 1, and then you just count. Nisan has 30 days, IR has 30 days, Sivan has 31. There are 30 days in each month, but there's one day for each gate. And when you count those out properly, you wound, or you wind up with the 9th of all falling on July 24th. And then... That is a very significant day. This is the day that two temples were taken away from, from the Jews. What do you think happens to Israel when the actual bride is gone, when all of Jesus' people are taken out of here? Yes, the, the Holy Spirit is going to, I don't know if he returns three days later or if he, we leave with the Holy Spirit in us, but the Holy Spirit comes right back. Um, I'm not sure how that works, but they will be getting saved in droves. Great multitudes of them will be being saved during that period of time, which I still can't find anyone or anyone to show anywhere to show me that the tribulation. Now, the tribulation period is not shortened. The tribulation period is seven years. What people are seeing when they study that this shortening thing keeps happening, that it's talking about shortening and, and the numbers don't quite line up and they don't know why, what's happening is that the saints of the tribulation, the time is cut short for the very sake of the elect. Remember, we're all elect. They are going to heaven. There is a group called the bride and then there is a group called the saints and they are going to heaven. I cannot see them staying here for very much longer. Remember how long did it take for Elisha to drop down to his knees, tear off the world, put on the cloak that was sent down to him by Elijah, and then strike the water himself and cross it. It was very quick. He wasn't even there for, you know, an hour. He wasn't there for very long at all. So I think every single time, even Jacob, Rachel, and Leah, what we see is, you know, oh, you, you, you gave me the wrong bride. He's like, no, you can't have the younger before the older, but you can have the younger, just give her her seven days. There's all of these examples that we see in the Bible of the saint represented by Rachel, because remember, Rachel still had stolen those um, things from her father, and that's why he came to, to, to come after them, because he was looking for those idols that she stole. She is still in the world. She's still not 100% accepting. So, but seven days later, he gets Rachel. He does continue to work for seven years. The seven years never changed, but seven days later, he got Rachel. So, we keep that in mind that the tribulation is seven years long, but the amount of time that the people will spend in tribulation for the very sake no flesh will be saved had the time not been cut short. Not the time of the tribulation, the time they'll spend it in it. So, we have Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. This is a very sad day. This is the day that uh, the, the Jews would go into the graves and in the morning... Uh, according to uh, the math of how many came out of uh, Egypt, about 15,000 would not wake up in the morning and they would simply cover them over. But the majority of them would come out of those graves, right? So this is a very high watch day, July 24th as well. Then you have Tubiah. This is a day that the brides or the women would be out in the in the wine field, uh, in the, uh, how you call the 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 grape field, the vineyard, the, out in the vineyard, and the men would come and choose themselves a bride. So this next 14 days is a very high watch day, probably one of the highest I've seen, and there's so much stuff in here. And then you look out 
just like the Bible says, you can see the, the the face of the clouds and know what's coming. You can't see what's about to happen. If you look out there, you just see everything that's going on, just everything. COP28, uh, they're trying to implement that by September. I just posted a video in my in my uh, community on my community uh, community page for Wackadoodle Simone. He's not making videos anymore, but he made one. And asked me to post it, which I did. And you can go in there and watch it. But he makes a very good uh, argument for uh, what's going on with uh, with the, the seven years and uh, the uh, his point was is that if you look at the word UN and then you reverse it new, and then he he goes through this entire explanation of that, and it's a really good uh, really good study that he did. So the next 14 days, beginning on July 16th, I would suspect that either the rapture will occur when Moses threw down the law, or Tisha B'Av when um, the temple was taken away twice before, or Tu B'Av when the bride goes out in the vineyard and gets chosen by a groom. Um, the next two weeks are, I think, will prove to be uh, very high watch days. And if not, we're going to continue to watch. Who is Jesus? Who is he? I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's God, right? It's Jesus, actually, but it's God, and I'll show you why it's Jesus. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. There is only one God. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. All these verses we find in the Bible showing that God is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Now, oh, wait a second. When did God ever die? <laughs> well, he did. He died on a cross. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys to the uh, keys of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen. What did Jesus do when he died? Where did he go? He went to Hades. And when he was there, he led captivity captive, and he took the keys of hell. Satan had them before. Jesus had every right to them when he redeemed all of us by dying on a cross for us. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel. My call, I am he, I am first, I am also last. That hate keeps happening. 726, that's not my date, but 726 came up, so I took a picture of it. 1111, somebody did a really good study on 1111. Um, I don't recall who, sorry, I watch so much stuff and read so much stuff, I don't ever recall where they came from. It is in my Discord. Um, it might, is it Dad Stash? I don't recall which one it was, but somebody made a very good study of 1111, and it was really compelling what they put together in there. Also, I asked Mike Daniel, he posted this on Facebook. I don't know if you were, would have seen this on Facebook, but uh, he did a really good job on this. And what's amazing after this, you'll see in the next one, when they find the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls are matching perfectly to this timeline that I put together. I love confirmations, little nods that come in that say you're on the right track. And uh, I'll show you that in a second. Two weeks after summer's full, uh, first full moon. Now, this is the Jews. This is the way they see it. This is not from the Dead Sea Scrolls, this part. This part is the way they see it. But I uh, screenshotted it because it's very important to understand um, what the wedding sign is. So for them, the wedding sign is two weeks after the summer's full, uh, first full moon when the lunar disk has returned to its new or dark phase, a profound heavenly sign occurs. The groundwork for the sign is laid several weeks earlier after the first day of summer when the sun enters the constellation Gemini. 
the sign depicting the wedding union between man and woman. The climax, however, the wedding sign, occurs when the sun is joined by the new moon, a symbol of the church bride on July 16th and 17th. Remember, I have down here um, July 16th at nightfall becoming July 17th as being the moment that uh, Moses threw down the stones. This annual meeting of the sun and new moon in Gemini, the sun depicting the wedding union, paints a heavenly picture of the wedding of Messiah to the church. Immediately after the celestial wedding on July 18th, the newly, new moon, bride moves into the constellation Cancer or the sheepfold, the sign depicting the church's eternal resting place of many mansions. Okay. That's really super interesting. And then he posts this right after it. This, so we'll just read. According to the temple scrolls discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Jews traditionally observed a new wine festival. Remember, Dr. Barry found this, and it was outstanding that he did. A hidden festival called the New Wine Festival. During the grape harvest, 50 days after Pentecost, Counting 50 days from the date most calendars mark Pentecost this year, May 28th, the New Wine Festival lands on July 17th. But my timeline does not show that. My timeline shows July 24th, so we keep reading. The day of the above-mentioned wedding sign, counting 50 days from Pentecost, as observed on the Temple Scroll calendar, Sivan 15 is June 4th. Now, mine shows Savant 15 as being May 30th. However, Savant 21 is June 4th. Uh, if you count 50 days, you will not land on July 24th. But the New Wine Festival lands on July 24th, a week after the wedding sign. So that, if you count from May 30th to June 5th, you are in those seven days where Jesus ascended, and then you land on Pentecost, Pentecost being on June 4th, 5th, on Sivan 21, it's, which is, again, seven days later. It's a befit it, it is befitting that the New Wine Festival coincides with the wedding sign as New wine is associated with the wedding of Messiah to the church. At Last Supper, Jesus proposed a marriage contract to the disciples and sealed it uh, with wine in Matthew 26, 27-28. He said that he would not again drink from the fruit of the vine until the day he drinks it new with his bride in the kingdom. So, Savon 15 on the timeline... Um, is accurate. It is Savant 15, but 50 days later would not be Savant, I mean, uh, July 24th. It would not. It would, uh, be just, uh, just doing the math simply on a Gregorian timeline, it would take from, it would take from June 4th to July 24th, but it would not, it would be Savant 21. It would not be Savant 15, like I showed you. I'll, let me go back there and show that to you real quick. So this is where the confusion has come in. They're, they're crossing dates. Savon 15, down here at the bottom, is Shavuot. It is the day Jesus ascended. It is the day Moses ascended into the mountain. But there's this little thing in there that people miss, and that is Moses sat in a cloud waiting for seven days. Savon 15, he waited until Pentecost. On Pentecost, in Savon 21, on June 5th, is when God began reciting the law to Moses and gave him the two tablets. He was up there for 40 days until God says, you need to get down because the people have gone crazy down there. 40 days later, he throws the tablets down on July 16th, and then eight days or nine days later is Pentecost again. You can see over here, Pentecost is 50 days from Sivan 21 to the 9th of Av. It's a simple count. I mean, even it's just a plain simple count. You can't mess that up. There is not there is 56 days between Savon 15 and the the uh, the ninth of Av. There, there's no way to, to 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 lose those seven days. You have to count them. So 
So he actually, uh, again, got the law or was learning the law for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he comes down on July 16th, the first of all, throws the stones down. God calls him back up where he says to uh, bring up some tablets so I can rewrite the law on the new tablets. When is the law actually delivered? When does the law actually get delivered to the people? It gets delivered on the 9th of Av. The 9th of Av, which is again Pentecost, the Pentecost that fully came. It is the wine festival on 924. So let me go back to where I was here. Uh, what did I highlight this? Let's see. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have, fill oh, I wanted to show you that a lot of people have talent, like amazing talents. They can sing. They're intelligent. They can, I mean, I've seen people do some mathematical problems just blow me away. I have no idea where they have the ability to triangulate things and you know, circumference and all that stuff that they do. They can tell you how many gallons are in my pool just by looking at it and doing some measurements. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm baffled by how they do that. Where does the gifts that we have come from? They come from God. They all come from God. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. This particular person, you wonder why some people are so good at things and others aren't. It's because God has given them a gift. Why do some people have the most amazing singing voice and then mine? You don't even want to hear it. I have a good speaking voice, I've been told, but I do not have a good uh, singing voice whatsoever. So all these gifts come to us from God. Take your gift and use it to the best of your ability, to the glory of God. And that happened again. Let's see here. The return of, and when. The, okay, so I posed this last video, and I haven't gotten really any. Uh, good studies on it. I would love somebody to go into the strong concordance. That's not my gift. I don't know how to do that. But here we see in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. I want to compare the words caught up together. And over here in 2 Thessalonians 2, which I think is the saints of the tribulation, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together. In the original language, how different are these? See, these both of these groups are going to heaven. But how different is the caught up together and gathering together? One is a rapture, caught up together. The other is a gathering. They will also be taken to heaven, but it is not called a rapture. A rapture is something that is taken out of imminent danger. The people in the tribulation are already in the danger. They will be gathered up. They will be crying and they will be, you know, they will have gone through it, but they will finally, just like Elisha, tear off the world and put on the cloak of God and trust only in Jesus and there will be a great multitude that no man can count that will be taken in seal six. That's the picture I'm going to use if it fits. So somebody noticed this in Discord also and I had not noticed this before and I wonder what the significance of this is and I just took pictures of it when he said it. I said that can't be true. But it is in the fifth month on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. This is when the temple is destroyed, right? The seventh day of the fifth month. Where does that land me? The seventh day of the fifth month would land me. The fifth month would be of, and the seventh day would be two days before the ninth of all that that we all call the day the temple was destroyed, and that would be July 22nd, two days before July 24th. And then this happens. That is 2 Kings 25, 8. This is Jeremiah 52, 12. Now, in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, 
you see the tenth day there. Here, you see the seventh day. Do we have a mistake? And the answer is no, we don't. I know we don't have a mistake. We just don't have understanding. The only thing that I can see different is the temple is destroyed, and here the temple and the city burned. It might have taken three days for the city to burn. It might be the three days of darkness. I don't know. But the tenth day of the fifth month is July 25th. So you have three days there. It means something. So this is from Zerub in the Discord, and he said, God has intentionally made a contradiction. And that is a contradiction in his word of the date noted for the destruction of the first temple. Second Kings has the seventh day, and Jeremiah has the tenth day. It's the traditions of Jews only that it have it uh, that have it on the ninth day teaching us not to follow the traditions of men for understanding of the word, but to study, not to be ashamed. And both dates, we get the 17th and the end of the month being used of seventh month known as July. So, whoa, that's a picture of me. Whoa, more pictures of me. <laughs> All right, so... um. That's what I have. I wanted to show that to you. We're in a very high watch time over the next two weeks. The rapture you know, could literally happen. I'm not calling a date because I really don't know. I'm still waiting for that uh, angel visit at the foot of my bed. But I have a feeling, and it's getting stronger and stronger, that everything we need to know is being revealed to us now. There's so much new information, and I've watched so many YouTubes, and people are just amazing with what they're coming out with. and um. I think it's right in front of us. I think it's the date is literally written right in the Bible, and it's right there. And at the end, when we get there, God's going to be like, oh, I did tell you. Amos 3.7 was very well fulfilled, and that uh, I did tell you. And that's why Revelations 3.3, 3, uh, I also fulfilled. You were watching, and that is what we're to do. We are to watch, and that's what we're doing. We're going to continue to do so. Until one second, we're standing here, and the next second, you're in heaven, standing next to people and seeing people you haven't seen in a while that passed on quite some time ago, and they're there, and you're going to be like, ah, and you're going to be built up, perfect body. You won't have this old, scruffy look. You'll be young again, strong again for eternity, and Jesus is going to show up. And uh, I've seen a lot of those posts in Facebook lately of Jesus hugging you when you first see him. And sometimes I just, I'm just like, I'm not even worthy to do that. <laughs> but then I realized he covered me in his blood. And once that blood gets on you, it doesn't get off. And uh, I'm there not by my rights, but by right of Jesus. And by being there in heaven, uh, you can stand proud and tall on the blood of Jesus, not on anything we've done. We have done nothing. He did it all. And that's the beautiful thing that uh, is going to happen to us when we get there. It's going to be incredible. And the city is going to be amazing. The roads and it's just going to be the t perfect temperature. Everything's going to be so perfect when we get there. It's going to be beyond belief. And then finally, you know, see the mansions and the crowning ceremony and the dinner and the drinking of the wine with Jesus that he promised he would do after uh, he wouldn't drink it again until he does it anew with us in heaven. And it's just, it's going to be something else. So I'm looking forward to it just like all you are. I'm not uh, any different than anyone else. I am just, you know, I thank God for this timeline. Um, it's all, everything just literally just like a puzzle, just all fell into place. It's beautiful. And it, it it really shows us, now again, you know, I'm not saying that's when the rapture is going to occur, but it sure is amazing how things, and of course, I mean, we've looked at previous dates. You'll see, I've never deleted a video ever from my YouTube, so um, you'll see um, many dates that I, that I thought of. And as a matter of fact, if you'll look um, a couple of years ago, I had all the dates wrong because I was going by based on what I saw. And then finally I was just like, all right, let me sit down with a calendar and put all these dates in and try to figure it out. So we finally made it to this point 
And uh, I've been working, like I said, uh, you know, 100 times before, I've been working on timelines for 30 years and uh, nothing ever fell in place. I I build a timeline and I step back and then some new date would come up, put on there. I'm like, that just doesn't match with this. And I kept praying. I'm like, Lord, this just doesn't match. But God revealed everything in his time and he's revealed so much, so many channels um, different types of things to so many channels as to when things land or what they are, like the New Wine Festival, that's new. We didn't know about that, and it just falls perfectly onto the timeline. And, uh, I mean, we're just seeing the world events, and we're hearing about dreams. Kids are talking about, I mean, just a three-year-old just step up and say, we're going to heaven soon. You know, it's crazy. That's That's wild that that's happening, so... Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord in your heart. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, man, we're we're literally, I believe we're literally almost so we I think look on September in September, that's when that signing thing happens. All this stuff has to transpire before that happens, you know, before that deal is made. So and that's September. That September the 15th, September the 15th, I believe is, yeah, September the 15th is the old new year, Rosh Hashanah. That's Rosh Hashanah Tishri 1. So we're literally, what are we, two, two, two months away, 60 days away. So that's, uh, that's something huge that's coming up, and I just can't see us making it that far. I really think we're going long before that. Those events of that time are for someone else, I believe, but... I guess we'll find out if we ever get there. I hope not, but we'll keep working on it, keep figuring out these dates. I got to make a new timeline. I got to straighten, clean this thing up, and uh, straighten it up to make it more uh, legible and understandable. So, all right, Repo Man 64. We'll chat with you again later.